Welcome to Salvation by Grace, a broadcast ministry of Grace Christian Assembly, a Sovereign Grace Fellowship in Smyrna, Tennessee. For more information, we invite you to visit our website at www.salvationbygrace.org. Now let's join our teacher, Jim McClarty. Well, actually, it doesn't say that, but there can't be a falling away of the... But here's his timeline. Whatever this falling away thing is has to happen first, and even says first, and then the man of sin will be revealed who is the son of perdition. So if I can show you what that falling away thing is, then I can show you that the falling away thing happens before the revelation of the man of sin, right? Okay, good. The word that is translated falling away is the Greek word from which we get our English word apostasy. And when we think apostasy, we think of you know, falling away from the faith, which is right, absolutely true. The uh, apostasy has this connotation to it. But the definition, the denotation of the word doesn't mean falling away from the faith. The denotation of the word simply means depart or departure. And that's precisely and exactly what the Greek word means. The Greek word does not mean fall away from the faith. The word is actually apostasia. Apostasia in the Greek simply means a departure. That's all the word means. I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to look up a bunch of verses. Because that same word is used throughout the New Testament. And in every single instance where you find the word, you find it saying departure from. And there's two different ways that the word can be used. There's the noun, which is departure. And then there's a verb form, which is departing or leaving. But it's the same word. Understand what I mean? Just like pistis, the noun, pisteo is the verb. Okay, the activity of departing versus the departure itself. There's only two places in the Bible where the noun is used, the departure. This is one of those two places. Everywhere that the verb form is used and the only other place where the noun form is used, it says departure from this. You understand what I mean? It always defines what you're departing from. This is the only place in the Bible where it doesn't say what the departure is from. It simply says the departure happens first. Now, because Paul doesn't in that verse say departure from the faith or departure <laughs> from the church, because it is this word apostasia, which has been transliterated into the English as apostasy, and instead of translating it departure, they've transliterated it apostasy, and it was handed down to us as the falling away. So did they, did they, did they do that every time? Departure is used or just in those two places? Just that one place. This is why exegetical work is so important. This is why you have to dig into what the language actually says. Because you could read right by that and say, well, there's a falling away first. A falling away? What falling away? There's a falling away. What, what falling away are we talking about? Now, there is, just so there's no confusion, there is a place specifically that does talk about a leaving, an apostasy, a departure, from the faith. Is it a Paul writing? Some have departed from the faith. It is Paul writing. We're going to look at it in just a second. There are some who have departed from the faith, but it says what they departed from. In every other instance, it's departed from something. This is the only place where he said the departure happens first, then the man of sin is revealed. What's the subject? The subject is the perusia of Christ and our gathering together unto him. The topic has not changed. He has not anywhere in the text introduced the concept of a falling away of the church. He has simply said there is a perusia, an appearing of Christ. There is a gathering together unto him. You are not in the day of the Lord because first the departure has to happen and then the man of sin is revealed. That's what he said in the Greek. But that turned into there's a falling away. So let me prove this to you in, in some great detail because there will be folk out there who I want to get this because if you get this, I remember there was a guy once on the internet who, who offered some sum of money, you know, $50,000 to anyone who could show in the Bible where it says pre-tribulation rapture. You don't find the words pre-tribulation rapture anywhere in the Bible. Well, no, if you're reading English, but the Bible wasn't written in English. If you look at it in the Greek, he says, I beseech you by his perusia, and are gathering together unto him, not to believe you're in the day of the Lord, because you yourselves know that first the departure happens, then that man of sin will be revealed. That's what it says in the Greek. 
Okay, so let's look at some verses. I'm going to hand out a bunch of verses. Tom over there, Luke 2.37. Kaylee, Luke 4.13. Uh, Megan, Luke 13.27. Libby, Acts 5.37 and 38. Um, Jennifer, Acts 12.10. And Melissa... Acts 15.38. What? Apostasia. Yeah. Uh, in English letters, A-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-A. -A. Look it up. I'm right. It's right. It's in my Bible. It's amen. was translated to falling away. No, departed. Departure. Fetching from truth. Yeah, but defection is in italics, and the truth is not. And so Precisely and right. Preci exactly. All it means is departure, defection, defection. leaving. Right. right. Now, Precisely right. It says defection from the truth, and then I realized that it's not in italics. Exactly. So exactly. So One more time. What it is is, you just have to understand the natural progression of language. Remember how Sunday we were talking about how baptize, baptizo in the Greek, rather than translate it, which is immerse, they transliterated it into the word baptize, and then the word baptize took on connotations of its own that immerse doesn't have. That's precisely what happened here. The word apostasia, rather than translate it, the departure, which is the right translation, they transliterated it to apostasy, and apostasy has taken on the connotation not just of departure, but of departure from the Christian faith. And next thing you know, you end up with two English words falling away, translating the one Greek word that means depart. Every one of these verses I'm handing out is going to use apostasia and a form of it. And in every instance, it's going to translate it as leave, depart, go. And then it's going to say depart from. Okay. All I'm proving to you here is that the way it's used throughout the New Testament is a departure. And then it always tells you what they're departing from. Okay. In this instance, because it doesn't say departing from, it stands as a noun by itself, the departure. Okay. And in the context of what Paul is talking about... The only departure he's speaking of is our gathering together to him. And then that man of sin will be revealed. If that's true, you have your pre-tribulation rapture spelled out just as precisely as you could ask for it. But I've got yet more evidence. Uh, where did I leave off? What did I... I gave you what? Acts 15.38. Did I? Okay. Leanne, Acts 19.9. Todd, if you would, Acts 22.29. Tiffany... 2 Corinthians 12, 8. Well, Jolene then, 1 Timothy 6, 5. And I'll even read the last two just so we can wail through these and I'll give you a sense of what's happening. Now, here's what I want you to listen for. In every verse I just gave you, there is a form, a verb form of apostasia. And in every single time, it's going to be translated simply as depart, leave, and then it's going to say, from. Okay? That's all I want to prove to you. The word itself doesn't mean falling away. The word itself doesn't mean falling away from the faith. The word itself simply means departure. On behalf of everyone at Grace Christian Assembly, we thank you for listening to this week's Salvation by Grace message. Remember to visit us on the Internet at www.salvationbygrace.org. And we invite you to join us next time when we gather around the Word and study the sovereign grace of God.